Okay, y'all. Hey, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Lauren Miller. Um, I'm 19 years old. I live in Atlanta, Georgia. I go to Georgia State University. I'm a political science major, theater minor, and I'm a Sagittarius. If you're into Enneagrams, I'm an Enneagram 3. Uh, and that's a little bit about me. If you're not new here, welcome back. I'm glad to see, well, I'm glad you can hear me. <laughs> Um, I've been going for a little bit, but I'm back. I am back. I am back. I took a little break. School got a little crazy. Um, but I'm all good to go and I'm super excited to share some things with you all and move forward. Whew, I feel like I can exhale, exhale, exhale and sidebar. A lot of you, I've been looking at the statistics and the, uh, analytics and all the things. A lot of you like my college content and, um, if you guys want that, I could definitely work on getting vlogs or doing more episodes or podcast episodes about college because you know that's what i do so <laughs> yeah but top three music choices of the week um ty Tribbett's new album is banging the one the new orleans uh sorry new orleans orlando uh, album release i love that album i've been jamming into it um there's a song by riley roth i think that's how you pronounce her last name and it's called when god made you my mother child when i say like it is so sweet like even if you're not a christian or whatever you would enjoy the song it's so sweet mother's day is around the corner so if you have a mother or a mother figure in your life you want to celebrate that song is definitely sweet and i know it'll um definitely soften their little heart and the third one for the week is a song called no worries featuring jermaine dolly by the red i think it's red hands yeah red hands and I tell you, it's like a little bop. It's cute, you know, like if you're cleaning or something and you need a little, you need a little, 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 little jazzy tune. That one will do it for sure. Um, if you're black, if you're a teen, if you're a girl, if you're a Christian, there's something here for you. So today, we're going to be talking about pivoting. Pivoting. Child, let me tell you something. I was the girl that was like, oh my gosh, when I come to college... I'm going to be doing all this. I'm making all this money. I am going to be, you know, the it girl. I'm going to be going cute to class. I'm going to make all these friends. Probably not. All these other things that I said I was going to do and I set out to do. Um, alongside, of course, making good grades and all that kind of stuff. And I got to college and realized, um, I don't think I want to do that. <laughs> and I haven't been doing that. I've, um. I've been myself. I've been authentic to who I am. Um, those that love it, rock with me. Those that don't, don't. And I, I just want to say, you know, it's it, it's really funny. Like I'm a, I'm a really I'm a relatively chill person. Um, you know, if you know me from like, it depends on where you've met me. Like some places I can be a little more extroverted. Other places I'm super introverted. But for the most part, I'm pretty chill. And so when people act weird towards me, it really just, I don't even know what to say. I don't know how to react because I don't, I don't know, but I, I have experienced a little bit of that. Like, you know, um, people who I, who I was cool with or connected with or whatever at the beginning of the year, um, kind of switch up if you will, or, um, act funny around a certain group of people but then when you see when you see them by themselves they're all like oh my god hi how are you so i just saw you with their group of people and you didn't speak but you know whatever but all this leads to my point of pivoting so i don't i'm a firm believer of don't change your goals change your steps to get there um as if you know if you've been listening to the pod then you know i have a wall of like goals and and they're not necessarily written out goals on this particular wall. They're more uh, inspirational things to get me to accomplish my goals. And the don't change your uh, goal, change your path to get to those goals is one of the quotes on the goal wall. And I just want to say, first of all, it's never too late to start anything. It's not. If you joined the pod almost a year ago now, you know, there are months I work out every day. There are months I work out five times a week. There are months I go to the gym one time. There are months I go to the gym zero times. And for me, it's frustrating because it's like I'm super amped about it. And the smallest thing will just set me off. 
and I've done a horrible job of pivoting. So I come on here, preach to y'all. And I'm, listen, one thing about me, I'm going to encourage somebody else. But, so, but I, sometimes I forget to encourage myself. And so I would get so frustrated. I was like, or, or like sometimes I'll eat really clean. And there are other times I'm eating Jenny's ooey gooey, gooey butter ice cream four times a week. You know what I mean? It's just like, oh my gosh, why can't I stay consistent? Why can't I keep going on the journey to my goals. And I think the reason is because I have to strengthen my ability to pivot. And so I think for me, um, through, through therapy and through self love journey and all that kind of stuff, I'm learning that I crave control. Um, for a lot of time, I feel like I wasn't in control of my life or I wasn't in control of the decisions that were made or made for me. Um, and so now growing as an adult, which is crazy to say, I hate saying that, but it, I mean, it's true. <laughs> I have to make my own decisions and sometimes it's uncomfortable for me. Um, but I still need to feel some kind of control. It's so, it's so toxic. I don't understand. Um, and so when things are out of my control, whew, that's when it gets ugly. Um, like I said, I'll stop working out. I'll start eating super, like, not clean. And I think that started a long time ago. It started when I was younger. If you can't control what you wear, if you can't control what you listen to, if you can't control what you do, you know, you can't control any of that, what can I control? And for me, I could control my food. So it was like, well, I'm going to just sit back, watch this little TV that I can't watch, and eat my food. And so for me, that's how I cope. It's not healthy. I have to find a new way. Um, but yeah, the, the smallest inconvenience, what I'm gonna do, one thing about me, if you ask anybody who knows me, I'm gonna take a shower. One thing about me, I'm gonna be clean. I'm gonna take a shower. I'm gonna get in my bed, my bonnet, and I'm gonna eat some food because it just resets me. It just like, you know, but the food I'm eating, the quantity of food I'm eating, the quality of food I'm eating is where we get in a little trouble because life is full of inconveniences. Um, that help you grow, that help that give you help give you a new perspective and all that kind of stuff. It's how you deal with them. And that's the part that Lauren is not good at. And if you're new here, I always say anything I talk about on here, I have not mastered. I have literally spitting ball spitting to you as it comes to me. Like I'm not a master. I have I don't have a book on this. I'm not like, ooh, I'm the master of pivoting. Like, follow me. It's things I'm learning and things I'm um understanding about myself or uncovering about myself that I'm also sharing with you all. It's almost like a little personal diary that just happens to be a podcast, you know? Yeah. So I think that's going to be my goal for June. What's what's after April? May. Jesus Christ. May. (laughs) May is like, I've done episodes on discipline because they're here to think. I have great discipline when it comes to certain things. Going to class? Oh, I'm going to go to class. I could be sick, shut in. I'm going to go to class when it comes to talking to certain people. Oh, I'm going to call your phone. You know what I mean? Like certain aspects of my life, I have it down pat. Things that I'm not so good at, that's where uh, a little of a challenge comes in. But I'm learning, what I'm uncovering about myself is that it's those areas that I'm not so good at. It's those areas that... I'm kind of weak at that show my actual discipline because if you do things that you enjoy and you're good at them, that's not a true testament to your discipline. That's not a true testament to your pivot. That's just you doing what you're naturally good at. So I've been saying, Oh, you know, yeah, I'm super disciplined, but the things you're not good at are the things that like for me, I realize I, I think I'm a bit of a quitter. Like I mentioned earlier, I like to be in control. And so when I'm not in control. I'm either going to pivot or I'm going to quit. Like, <laughs> I like to be the best. I like things that I'm not good at or things that don't come natural to me. I don't enjoy because I'm a lot of things come natural to me. A lot of things I'm good at. So if I'm not, it feels uncomfortable. It's like, ew, ew, ew. I don't like this. I don't like this feeling. I don't like not being number one. I don't not like being, you know, in control. And so a lot of a lot of those areas of my life are the areas that I'm like, "Mm," hence why the gym thing. There are months I could be a rock star and you would think I'm like, a gym pro and then there are other months it's like oh my gosh Lauren you have not stepped foot in a gym and I think because those are one of the areas that I'm not the best at that you're not going to see overnight progression and sometimes um going to the gym makes you feel better but if I'm going to lose weight or I'm going to look better and I'm not seeing any results 
and I'm art. This is art, not something that I I enjoy. Then it's like, hmm. And so I think I have to relook and reframe the way I talk about and. Uh, hmm, the way I talk about and the way I lecture, if you will, about discipline. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's what we're going to talk about. I am super, I'm in a weird spot. Um, I'll be 20 in December, which is like insane to me. I feel like I was born yesterday. <laughs> There's a lot of things I'm learning and unlearning about myself, about life, about college, about my feelings, about the way I handle and manage my life, my emotions, uh, you know, life choices, money, finances, those kind of things are starting to be big factors, future plans, relationships, romantic and platonic, um, all those things. As you get older, they start to, you know, matter a little more. And again, you have a little more control over what you consume and where you go and all those kind of things. And so I'm in a weird spot. Next year, I got the offer to be an RA um, in one of the dormitories at Georgia State. And although it's cool, it's like, you know, I get to help others. I love helping other people. It, it genuinely makes me happy to help other people. And I believe that's one of the reasons why... Um, I get put in a lot of positions I am because I'm very generous and generosity is just not your money. It could be your time and other things like that. But anyway, and of course, you know, free, free dorms and free meal plan is like, that's great. <laughs> you know, refund check. Yay. But I'm not going to lie. It's, it's, it's definitely something that scares me. Um, having to be that contact point for a lot of students, potentially anywhere from 35 to 40 to people. I'm again, I'm an, I'm an introvert. I'm kind of shy. I can, I can I can be outgoing. I can be extroverted when I have to be. Not extroverted, but like outgoing. I, I can be outgoing. Um, if you see me in certain areas, especially if I have to be a leader or something like that, you wouldn't know that I'm shy. But then when I come home, I'm like, ooh, ooh so I have to decompress because it's a, it takes a lot out of me to be that super outgoing person. And so to have to be that person, and the specific dorm is a freshman dorm, so... They really need a lot of help. And I'm I'm kind of low-key. I'm very chill. I didn't need a lot of help. But I, I have an understanding that some freshmen next year are going to need a little more support than others. And that's okay. And I'm excited to be that support for them. But it does make me a little nervous. Um, or even this summer, uh, moving back home for the summer. How is that going to look? I've been in my own space, had control of my own space and for, what, nine months almost maybe? So having to be under somebody else's roof and their rules. How is that going to impact me? Being around my family, things like that make me super nervous. Or even like I have fitness goals that I set for myself, that I haven't, uh, I haven't accomplished or met. And because I know that I can, I crave control and I crave to be number one. And I crave to be successful. The failure does not motivate me. If anything, it sets me back and it's like, um, okay. And this is why we're talking about pivoting. I need to learn. Or I'm trying to learn to let that failure fuel me to go harder and not to cave in. So if I say, okay, by June, let's say I said in January, okay, by June, I want to lose 20 pounds and I haven't, that doesn't make me go, Ooh, yeah, you know what? It's June. I didn't meet it, so now I'm going to go super hard. What it makes me do is lay back in that bed and snack some more. And it's like, why? Why, why, why? I have a therapy session in a couple of days. I'm going to ask her, how do I... I want to change my mindset from things happening to me to things happen for me, if that makes sense. So letting the setback, letting the failure be used as fuel and motivation to pivot and go forward. Um, if you play if, if you play ball, then you already know where I'm, where I'm going with the pivot. It's it's not about stopping. It's not about you know halting. It it really is just a change in momentum. I was going one way. I was doing one thing. It's just a small little minor adjustment, you know. And I think I I have, I have an unction. I have a feeling. Um, 
that we're gonna have to we're gonna have to pivot for the summer whatever that looks like if that's your spiritual walk if that's your mental walk if that's your emotional walk if that's your physical walk i feel like we're gonna have to pivot and i, I want to be prepared i want to be um equipped to handle whatever is coming my way because it changes changes are hard changes are hard but life is full of them and it's all about how we handle those changes and how we adapt to those changes that allow us to have a happy and successful life and path. And I don't want to be the person that things happen to me. I don't want to just, oh, this happened to me. Oh, this happened to me. Oh, this. I want to be the person, okay, this, this obstacle or this whatever came, I handled it this way and it worked for me. And that's the perspective I want to adopt. That's the few I want to adopt. And I, I, I want to pivot. I want to change even with this podcast um if you've been following me for a minute you know i came from youtube i love videos i love editing the videos i loved filming the videos filming all that kind of stuff and i kind of pivoted to podcasts and now i feel like i I almost want to pivot back to youtube i want to figure out a way to do video and audio (laughs) bless me (laughs) and editing because i have a passion for it it's so much fun um I'm one of those people, if my mouth doesn't say it, my face definitely will. And so a lot of my facial expressions and stuff I'm doing with my hands makes the content a lot more, a lot more enjoyable and uh, funny. And I love that. And I am much more likely to pick up my phone and record than I am to sit down at, at this mic, which is why sometimes I totally forget to do this podcast. I'm telling you, like anybody who knows me. My personal life knows that like, I have a lot of memories in my phone because I'm quick to pick up my phone and record. Like, I'm really good at that. Sitting down, plugging this mic in and all of that. Mm, it's cool. I love it. Uh, but I love the camera. I don't know. It's something about it. It's something about it that excites me. And so I'm definitely mm, figuring out how I can pivot for the summer and get some more content um, that way, especially college content. Since now I know that's what you guys want, like what you need for college and what you don't, especially if you're going to state, like I got you. So I I know for sure I'm going to do one of those probably a little later though, because nobody's buying school supplies for August now. Hopefully you're not because a lot of time they go on sale and things like that. But I'm looking forward to helping you guys um, and helping myself. I think, sharing my journey with you all talking to you all it all as much as some of you guys say it helps you all it also helps me to one get off my chest to hear you all's stories and perspective on the topics we're talking about and to be helpful and useful um i love you guys i appreciate the, i appreciate the support if you're not following me on instagram go ahead and do that it's lauren miller underscore underscore on tiktok it's um it's lauren miller it's literally like at it's lauren miller um Thank y'all for supporting. Thank y'all for supporting. More to come. Uh, Learn to pivot so that you don't end up like Lauren and then beating yourself up when you don't meet your goals. Because there are plenty of things that happened this year on campus that made me mad or whatever. And instead of using that as fuel, I kind of let it stop me or stop my progress. And then now I was like, dang it, I could have been this far. I could have been doing this. It's not too late. And with me saying that, I definitely need to go to the gym Tuesday and Thursday at least. So if you're at GSU, you might see me at the gym at 6.30 in the morning, Tuesday and Thursday. Come holler at your girl. All right. (laughs) Thank y'all. I love y'all. Thank y'all so much. I'll see you guys next episode.